I'm making another video today, um, and I wanted to talk about books today, and some of my favorite books, um, that I have here at my dad's house. I'm leaving on Monday, so I figured I had to do this now before I leave, so then I don't wish that I had made this video earlier when I was actually here. So, um... I'm actually sitting on the floor, which isn't that comfortable because it's tile, tile floor. Um, and I just wanted to show you some of my favorite books from my childhood and by childhood. I mean, I probably have had these books since I was eight and it, the favorite part runs from when I was about eight to the present. Um, this is the first book I wanted to show you. It's called Forest Animals. It's got a nice wolf on there. And some other animals over here. Um, this is a really good book. It's my favorite non-fiction book. It, um, it has great information and pictures. Some are real pictures. Some are, oops, wrong way. Um, some are drawn. That is a drawing of a bear. This book includes information about wolves, um, bears, moose, there's some moose, it's very nice, um, deer, there's some deer, yeah, you can see that, um, and then I said wolves already, uh, can't find a good picture, there's a wolf, very pretty. Anyway, this is by far one of the best books I've read that is nonfiction. Um, it's really interesting. They have really cool facts about the animals. Um, lots of great pictures. So I'm going to show you that. Um, oops. This book is not one I wanted to show you. Okay, now here are three of some of my favorite books. This book. That is a snake. Um, I don't really know how to pronounce it. Verdi, something like that. It's about a snake who's yellow, and he wants to. Um, all the other snakes, the bigger snakes, are green, and so he wants to be green. He wants to be older, and so he goes on this big journey. Um, there's a picture of him spiraling up there. And those are the green snakes. He wants to be like them. He goes on a big journey um, and starts turning green and he realizes it's not the greatest. So that's kind of cool. Um, okay, this one, I really like this book. It's called The Tree That Would Not Die. Um, my step grandma, my stepmom's mom gave it to me um, a long time ago. I'm not sure when, I don't have it written anywhere, but it's about a tree in Texas that is really old, um, 500 years old, and it kind of goes through its journey. I guess you can't really call it a journey because it hasn't gone anywhere because it is, in fact, a tree. Um, it's really cool. It's got some cool drawings. Um, it's just a really cool story. It shows, it goes through the history of Texas as well, and then... There's this guy, he tries to kill the tree, he's poisoning it, and um, these people are really excited and try to save it, and this is it today. I actually saw this tree, I went to Texas um, and saw the tree. It's actually pretty cool. Um, I was kind of young then, so I don't really remember a lot about that. Um, I wanted to show you this book as well. I think I got all three of these books from my step-grandma. I got this one in 98. Um, if I do the math, I was seven. So it's called The Legend of the Windigo. It is a really cool book and it looks cool too. It has some great pictures in here. This is one of my favorites. It's an Indian village thing. Um, it's really cool. It's about it's like the legend and it leads up to mosquitoes. Um, this windigo, which is made of stone, 
There's a picture of him. Um, he lures people in with his eyes if you make eye contact, I think that's the story. Um, he lures you in and kills you. And so one day, um, this lady went missing, and so then the tribe realized that the Wendigo was killing the people, so they made a trap. That's them building it. And they put a bunch of brush under there, and they lured him in and made no eye contact, and there's him falling into the trap. And the only way to kill him was to burn him, so they burned him alive, basically. Well, I don't know if you could call him a living thing since he's made of stone, but anyway, they burned him. And then, all of a sudden, the brush on top of him, it collapsed, sending out a bunch of ash and sparks. And each one of those little sparks was, um, it went out to the people and it says, um, well, the heart exploded. That's what happened. And, um, there's a scream and inside that scream was a voice, a tiny little voice, almost like a buzzing sound that each person heard right next to his ear. It said, you can burn me up, but you won't be rid of me. The Wendigo will haunt this land forever. I'll be eating the people for generations to come. And so, um, everything collapsed, and then there are mosquitoes. And that's what, um, all the ashes turned into were mosquitoes. And so that's the legend of how mosquitoes came to be, basically. Um, it says that the Wendigo kept his promise in the form of mosquitoes. He has been eating the people ever since that day, but now he can only take one bite at a time. Lucky us, I suppose. Um, I don't really know. I think this is Cherokee. Cherokee Indian story. Um, the back says something like there's no Native American story because they're all different. They really are. Um, so this is one that I don't know who came up with this. It's retold by the author. So they don't really know the origin, but those are really cool books. They're some of my favorites. Um, they're little kid books, but they're still really good. Um, they're not as little kid as... Well, these aren't even little kid. They're huge books. And that's going to fall. Um, I have this book, Winnie the Pooh. We have Many Adventures of Winnie the Pooh. I love this book because it's cute. I got it in 97, so that means I was six. Wow, six, okay. Um, but it has like the stories, it has like all the classics. I think it has a blustery day. Um, I don't know what other ones. The honey tree, the blustery day. Um, a day for Eeyore, that's actually a good one. I think it was his birthday. Um, and they got him gifts, maybe not, could be wrong. I don't know, really. I haven't read this book in a long time. No, they did. Um, Piglet got a balloon, and then on his way to give it to him, it popped. And then Pooh got him honey, but he was hungry on the way, so he ate it. But they still gave him the empty pot and the popped balloon, and he really liked it anyway. And he had a fun game where he would just drop it into the pot. And it says, Hippy Pappy Bethuth. I think he was trying to say happy birthday, but it does not say happy birthday. I don't know if you can read that, but that does not say happy birthday in any way, shape, or form. It's more entertaining that way, I suppose. And little kids, they can't really read when they're like two. Not that I was two when I got this, but it could have been. Then I have this a complete collection of everything Winnie the Pooh. I've never opened this, actually, but I got it a long time ago. It's pretty cool, I guess. I just opened it now. Looks cool. Um, I just wanted to share that with you. Um, I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it wasn't boring. I actually wanted to do some more stuff in here, but it looks like these books took up the whole time. I'll have to make another one where I talk about some different books, so um, I'll see you later. Bye.